legends and welcome to my Easter Sunday special. It is a bake with link. We're going to be baking Terry's chocolate orange nest cakes. Hello legends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're making Terry's chocolate orange cornflake cakes. I haven't made cornflake cakes in about 10, 15 years, so this could be a disaster. But let's go with it. Here's all the ingredients you need. Cornflakes from Kellogg's, other brands are available. I've gone for Terry's chocolate orange, orange chocolate, because they had an orange chocolate Terry's Easter egg, and I kind of thought, I wonder what cornflake cakes made out of orange chocolate would be like. So I've never tried this before, this is a bit of an experiment. So I've got three of them, and then I've got three bags of the, the mini eggs, just to put a little, you know, with the je ne sais quoi on the top. And then obviously you need your bun cases. These are from the co-op, um, because it was a hundred for one pound 15, I think it was. So that seemed reasonable. I don't know what bun cases normally cost. Do you call them bun cases or cupcake cases? Anyway, let's get going. First thing I always do is I lay me bun cases out. Because if you melt your chocolate and your cases aren't ready to go, you're getting all sorts of kerfuffles where the, the chocolate's starting to, to reset and you're in a rush and you're throwing stuff around and it becomes a disaster. I don't know how many cakes this makes, this ratio, but I've got my cupcakes down here. So I'm hoping to fill the majority of that, which is 4, 6, 10, 18, 22, 20. Three, that's my lucky number, can't be. Five, ten, plus eight is eighteen, plus four is twenty-two, twenty-three. Didn't do that on purpose. Let's get twenty-three cakes out. I don't think it will make that many. But you never know if you don't try. I also recommend you, you kind of join them up so they're all close to each other. Because if, if they're close to each other, when you go across, you can just drip into each other. Hopefully. 21, 22, 23. Right, so as you can see behind me, should have moved down first for you. As you can see behind, I've got them laid out ready to go. So as soon as my chocolate's melted, I'm bow it straight in there instead of it all getting, you know, just dry. So, the next step is to smash up your chocolate. Now, doing it with Terry's chocolate orange, I think it makes my life easier because you can just go. And it's broken up ready for you. I think that is a big advantage of using a Terry's chocolate orange for this sort of recipe because it's already, you know, segmentalized. So there you have a load of segmented orange chocolate. So what you want to do now is pop it in a microwave. You want to do like a minute and then like 30 seconds, and then 30 seconds, and then 30 seconds. Because it's better to undercook it than to overcook it and like make it burn. So yeah, less is more. Little and often, slowly, slowly melty chocolate. Start off with the one minute. My recommendation is now you put it in front of me, take it out, have a look. As you can see, it's melted a tiny bit, but not really. So you just want to give it a little move around with a spoon. Then do 30 seconds more, and eventually it will look wonderful. And you just repeat this process until it's all nice and melted, which we're pretty close to at this point. So probably another 30 seconds will be plenty. And don't be scared to go less than 30 seconds when you're near the end, because not enough is better than too much in this situation. It's not often you hear me say that. Now your chocolate's ready. You want a few little Rice Krispies in the bowl. Not Rice Krispies, cornflakes. Then you get your chocolate. This is the fun part. 
Look at that. Try not to burn yourself, but there's a lot in there that you've just got to scrape out. Always is. You don't want to waste chocolate. In like any situation, but especially in this one. Your next step is to get your bowl up, mix them in. Now you want to start with what is definitely not enough, cornflakes. Because the biggest mistake people make with cornflake cakes is that it's all cornflake and no chocolate. Ain't nobody got time for that. So yeah, we can probably double what was in there. But just slowly, slowly. You don't want to get, you don't want to get carried away. You see how much I'm adding? Just don't go crazy. It doesn't matter if they get a bit smashed up as well. Like, it's just gonna add to your little bird's nest effect, which you which you add in the eggs for. And this, obviously, this is as well a little bit, is, a little bit of this is sort of doing it to your taste. Like that's very chocolatey at this point. But if you want it to be more chocolate than cornflake, go for it. You do you. I think one more handful will be plenty. I think, because I quite, I do like a chocolate. Oh. I feel like we got one more. As you can see now, they're starting to struggle to get chocolate coated. That's when you, you know it's time to ease up. If you add more after that, you've got to do it carefully. I'm not brave. So from there, pop that in your bun cases and away you go. I'm not too careful doing this, lots of people will be very much more um, kind of artsy with it, but I just care about how it tastes, not how it looks. Obviously one thing to think of, and this should be obvious, is they're not like normal cakes. Normal cakes rise, these obviously won't rise, so you want to, you know, you want to do them some quite nice full cases to start with, yeah? Just. I might just nick a 13th one. Nah, probably won't. Let's try... Let's just try a couple more cornflakes, see if it's freezing on one out. This is getting very experimental at this point, but it ain't working. I thought I might have just had enough chocolate on the fringes of the bowl to soak, steal one more out of it. Which I kind of have. Don't get me wrong. Then what you want to do is take your, your mini eggs and then just Pop three in each cake. Let's bring you a bit closer. So there you have it. That's how you make these cakes. Now you've got to let them cool down before you eat them unless you want to get in a mess. If you have a cooling rack, that's definitely the best way to do that. I don't, so I'm gonna try and move them onto a plate and put them in the fridge. At this point, I wish I'd put them on a plate or a cooling rack to start with, but you learn from your mistakes, right? So once they've been in the fridge for a while, this is about an hour, they're all set. You can see that I've got plenty of chocolate on them, apart from that one, which was sort of at the end. Lots of people make their whole, all their cakes like that, and you would get more out of it, but 
I'd rather have lots of chocolate. Let's see how they taste. That's mad in chocolate though. That's what you want. I score every out of 10. I made them. Obviously it's a 10. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got other baking ideas, let me know. If you've enjoyed this, obviously give the video a thumbs up. And drop a comment on what you baked over Easter or what you did over Easter. What did you go up to? Did you do something fun? Last yet, all there is left to say is thank you for being one of my legends. And I will see you real soon. Happy Easter. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you've enjoyed that, you can click up here and you can watch another video of mine. Or if you really love it, if you really, really love it, or even if you just like it a little bit, go down here and subscribe to the channel. It means you'll never, ever miss what is coming up real soon.